Welcome everyone, it is Andrew here from Apple Insider. And after getting an early look at the Bridge Pro Plus this year at CES 2020, we finally have our hands on an actual unit, the one that will be shipping to everyone starting very soon. The device comes at a very interesting time. The new iPad Pro has just launched and Apple announced their own new keyboard trackpad combo, the Magic Keyboard, set to launch later this year. So how does the Bridge Pro Plus stack up? Well, let's go hands on to find out. It is very easy to connect, just turn it on and hold the Bluetooth button for a couple moments. Then head to the Bluetooth settings on your iPad where the Bridge Pro Plus will appear. It shows up as one device, even though you're connecting kind of two different accessories, the trackpad and the keyboard. Because of human interface device guidelines, they're able to pass both of those pieces of data through one stream, simplifying the setup process. The device itself is gorgeous. We have the space gray version to go with our space gray iPad Pro, and it looks dead on. It's basically the same thickness as the iPad Pro and has the same kind of design and feel to it. The colors match up pretty much perfectly. You have a solid keyboard there in the center, below sitting the trackpad, and a USB-C port on the side for powering it up. Once charged, this thing can go roughly three months on a single battery. For the most part, you use it just as you would any keyboard and trackpad. The trackpad moves around just as you would expect. You can use two fingers to scroll up and down, though it is missing some important gestures like the ability to swipe back and forth using two fingers. There's a hardware Siri button in the lower left hand corner, just press on that and Siri will pop up. You also have a dedicated row of function keys, including the keyboard backlight, brightness for the screen, quick locking, the on-screen keyboard, media controls, the localization icon, as well as Bluetooth volume and power there to the right. It does have a backlight, but it isn't all that bright, and there's a lot of likely around the edges. Of course, we're at a kind of a sharp angle here, but as you're typing, you can definitely see that light bleeding around the edges of the keys. Still, I love having a backlit keyboard, and it definitely makes working at night a whole lot better. Everything is held together with these new revamped hinges. They're very nice. They're definitely an improvement over some previous designs. So they're roughly the same thing though. They're kind of just U-shaped. They clip onto the iPad. They hold it snugly just around the bezel, adding additional support around back. They have silicone shims on the inside, which theoretically should make them upgradable depending if the iPad changes its shape or size on newer versions. And there's a little bit of rubber on the edges too, which gives it just a little bit of drop protection should anything happen. And there's a piece of rubber at the bottom, so as you lift your iPad up and that rotates down below, it gives another piece of rubber or silicone against whatever surface you're putting your iPad Pro on. Included in the box as well, not only do we have the keyboard and a USB-C charging cable, but we have a back cover. So this is essentially kind of gives you a little bit more protection on your iPad. It feels kind of like a faux leather. You can see easily which way it's orientated and there's a big bridge logo dead in the center. Of course, if you just picked up the new iPad Pro, you're going to need to hold off for a second because the current one in the box just ships for the existing iPad Pros or the 2018 models. So that fits just fine, but if you have the new iPad Pros, don't worry, they will be shipping out a new version so all new ones will include the square cut out for the updated 2020 iPad Pros. I do like the look of that back cover and the protection is good, but honestly this thing looks really good just without any additional protection at all. It is very sleek, the keyboard itself is pretty much the same size as the iPad, the color match is spot on, it just looks great all around. But if you've been paying any attention to the Apple space, you know things have gotten a little bit crazy lately. Not only were we surprised by the new iPad Pro, but Apple dropped iPad OS 13.4, which actually brought real support for cursors and pointers within the OS, one that is built for a touch interface first. And you can definitely tell, it morphs as you go over buttons and icons, changes to a line as you're trying to edit text for very precise edits, and a whole lot more. There are now new options inside of settings where you can change your tracking speed, invert that natural scrolling, and change that secondary click option. A lot of that is well and good, but it also had some adverse effects on Bridge. Some of the gestures they were hoping to support don't seem to work yet. Now things could change in the future as Apple continues to improve support here. Things are still a little bit wonky as we see kind of the OS getting really excited as we scroll through things. The feel just kind of not smooth in different parts, but hopefully that's going to improve over time. You can see here as we move the cursor around, it just kind of jumps every once in a while. It's not kind of a deal breaker by any means, but it's certainly noticeable and if you're using the mouse a lot, it might start to get on your nerves. 
hopefully Apple fixes this because it's not an issue with their own Magic Mouse 2 and Magic Trackpad 2. So we're hoping that that smoothness that we see there through other accessories comes to Bridge as well. Bridge says it's on Apple to kind of fix some things and we're really hoping that pans out as they, inc as they continue to improve support for mice and keyboards and those Bluetooth accessories. It's really about compromise, so even though some gestures may not work, there's other ones in their place. So say you're inside of an app and you want to access the dock. Just drag your mouse towards the bottom and the dock appears. Continue dragging and you'll go to the home screen. Drag once more and you'll open up the app switcher. Pretty easy to do, but before you would be able to pull down with three fingers and access it that way. You can't do that now, but instead you can do it through just a tap. So tapping with three fingers, you can program to really any command that you'd like. Two fingers you can program as well, but two fingers acts as a right click of sorts. So right click on a word or an icon to access that contextual menu. But you can remap either of those to whatever you'd like from within the assisted touch accessibility settings. Just turn on assistive touch and go down to devices and then click on the bridge pro plus. Here, tap on customize button and tap on that surface with three fingers. Now, assign that gesture or that tap to anything that you'd like. There are a ton of different system controls such as locking it, opening up the dock, invoking the app switcher, pulling down control center, or you can get more fun and launch a Siri command if you'd like, or any Siri shortcuts that you've already programmed. For us, we think it's an easy way just to go ahead and tap instead of even pulling down to open up that app switcher. Honestly, for us, it feels a lot easier that way anyway, so we're not going to gripe all that much about the loss of that gesture. When you're evaluating the Bridge Pro Plus, there's good things and there's bad things. You see the little bit of lag in the mouse, and it kind of irks you a little bit. But at the same time, that's not Bridge's fault necessarily. That's Apple and their OS, and they just had this 13.4 update sprung on them, which added and removed different functionality. Bridge's hardware itself is solid. It looks great, feels great, the trackpad is nice and spacious, and everything works as we'd expect. We're going to get used to using the trackpad a little bit more, but it feels right at home on the new iPad Pros. The Bridge Pro Plus is a great accessory. It really adds a lot of functionality to the iPad Pro, and it's a lot cheaper than Apple's own Magic Keyboard that's launching this May and has a lot of similar functionality. Hopefully, Apple continues to polish support for both Bluetooth mice and trackpads, and this device will only get better over time. If you want to pick one up for yourself, follow the link down below in the description and let me know your preference over on Twitter. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? Be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.